All right, we've seen what these equations look like on the whiteboard. Let's plug them into MATLAB and see what happens here. So let's start with the quadratic. That's making a list of x's. It goes from minus 2 in steps of 0.14. All right, that'll, uh, that range will include both the roots of that equation. So there's that. Let's write this. This is the, the equation for the quadratic. semicolon there because I don't want to watch everything come back to the screen. Now if you remember this isn't going to work. Watch. It's going to give me an error. Yeah, see? Not happy. One of the things you'll notice in MATLAB is that errors are in red text. I hope you can see this on your screen. But this is kind of a dull red. Warnings are in orange. Warning says it, it ran, but there's trying to give you tell you something about the run. Red, it doesn't run. There's an error here. And the reason it says incorrect dimensions for raising a matrix to a power. The heck does that mean? Well, right there, x is a vector, isn't it? I just defined it in the previous command. It's right there. Well, there's a couple of ways to multiply vectors together. And the one I want to do is I want to operate on each element individually. And down here, it even says what to do. Put a dot in there. So I'm going to hit the up arrow. Pull that back, hit that, bingo, now it runs. You can see over here I have two vectors that are 61 long. Remember that one because there's a zero in, in this range here. So it's not 60, it's 61. And now I can plot. Let's clean up the screen a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and plot x versus y. And I'll turn the grid on that down where you can see it. And there we go. There it is. Now that's pretty stark, I think. Let's do something here. I'm going to put the plot on the right, and I'm going to just pull this window over here on the left so we can uh, see what's going on in the plot as I start changing formats and things. All right, so let's, let's do that. That's a little better. Marvy. Okay. So let's plot this again, but let's make some changes. Now, for starters, I want the line to be blue, bright blue. Well, if, if you know, can, the plot command allows a bunch of options that go right there after the X and the Y, and you it's uh, text. So I'm going to put a single quote to say what comes next is text. I'm going to put a B, and I'm going to close the quotes. That means make it blue. In fact, if you want to do this, go ahead, go ahead and... Pull up the help for plot. Bring this over here where you can see it. There we go. You'll see that here. these are all the choices. That's the one I want. And I'm going to shrink this down so we can see it all on the screen here. Ah, there we go. And it'll tell you all about the plot command. So see right there, line spec. Line spec is, uh, tells you what color you want and what markers you want and that sort of thing. There's a bunch of other commands you can, or uh, options you can put on here. So scroll down through this at some point. And there's some options or some examples here. Notice one really useful one is you can uh, make more than one plot on the same set of axes if you want just by stacking them up in the plot command. You can do that. And it'll show you that as you uh, change the line spec, you get different kinds of lines. Turn markers on. So scroll down through all this. And at the bottom, there's long, long way down because there's a lot of options in the plot command. There's what the uh, options look like. It'll give you a, a nice, clear set of instructions on what to do. So this is the three kinds of lines you can use, solid, dotted, dashed, and then dot, dash. And there's a pile of different markers you can use, and then some different colors you can use. So when you want to know how to uh, search through these, just type in plot on this uh, search window up here and just hit return. It'll come up with that for you. So I'm going to keep this simple. I'm going to use the B and uh, just hit return now and I'll get the grid. You'll be able to see it here. You might be able to see that my uh, line turned bright blue there. Well, I'm not a huge fan of running the uh, plot all the way to the limits of the axis. 
There's a couple ways to change the axis limits. One is I showed you in a previous video is click there and just uh, click on the axis itself. There's another way. If I just hit axis, that tells me the x and y axis of the plot. It goes from negative 2 to 4 in the x direction and minus 4 to 5 in the y direction. Well, I can change that if I want. Now this is a vector, so I can I have to treat it as a vector. So let's go from minus 3 to 5. That'll give us a little bit of room. And minus 5 to 6. So, so that's minus 3 to 5 in the x direction and minus 5 to 6 in the y direction. There we go. Now you notice the plot just stopped there. It didn't continue down. Well, the reason is it doesn't have any more points. I didn't give it any more. So we can either recalculate or maybe we decide it's okay if it hits, hits uh, 4 on the bottom or minus 4 on the bottom. There we go. Let's do that. Now it would be awfully nice if we knew, could see the x-axis here. I mean you can because there's a line, a, a grid line there. But let's make a line. And then the line command has, you see right there, it wants x's and y's. So you're defining the x locations of both ends of the line and the y locations on both ends of the line. And x and y are both vectors. So if I want to go from minus 3 to 5 in the x direction, in the zero, in the y direction is just 0 and 0 because I want it on the x-axis. And hit that. So I got that. I want to make that a big black line so we can see it. So I'm going to double click. And now property inspector comes up. Let's make it black. And let's make the width really big. There. Like while we're at it, let's make this big too so you can see it. There turn that off. So now we can see what the uh, that parabola looks like and you can kind of see where the uh, roots are going to be. They're going to be right there and right there. So finding a root means setting the equation of the line equal to zero and uh, what that means graphically is that's where the, the, the uh, plot crosses the x-axis. So we can just zoom in here if we want. What I did here is I'm going to click the, the little magnifying glass and do that so I can just zoom in as far as I want now there's one thing you got to remember here this plot doesn't have infinite resolution I'm going to double click on it here and I'm going to turn the markers on so you can see how much data we've actually got it doesn't look like I turned a marker on you can't see it there well they're there I'm going to use the scroll wheel to scroll back out Oops, maybe I'm not going to turn that off. There we go. I'm going to use a scroll wheel to scroll back out. That's the middle wheel on my mouse. So there's a point. All right. So there's the plot. If I put my pointer right there and start scrolling in, I can uh, zoom in. Now, these are straight lines between points here. So I can zoom in as far as I want. I can, I can get all the resolution I want. But... The actual function is a curve, but that's a straight line, so I can zoom in if I want. But this straight line is an approximation to the curve, so even though I can see you know, as many uh, decimal points as I want, this isn't quite the right curve. If I want to find roots by zooming in like that, I'm going to need to add more points. So one of the things I can do is I can right-click, click on that, right-click, and I can restore view, zoom it back out. So how am I going to find the roots of this exactly? Um, there's obviously the quadratic equation. We did that on the board. But how am I going to do it numerically? Well, there's a function called F0 and another one called F solve. I'm going to start with F0 because uh, it's the simplest of the two. F0 only works on a single equation, and F solve works on multiple equations. So let's try this. I'm going to clear this uh, command window here. In fact, I'm actually going to clear the workspace. Okay, so there's no more data in the workspace. Now the figure still exists. I didn't delete the figure, so it's there, but now I can't recalculate it because there's no more data. In, there's no uh, data in the workspace. So how am I going to execute the F0 command if I don't have any data or anything to, for it to work on? 
you have to hand F0 a function. And there's two ways to do it. One is with an anonymous function, and the other one is to actually write a little routine where the function lives. So I'm going to go ahead and use the anonymous function. So there's how you start an anonymous function. That ampersand is real in the, the parentheses x. That says that what comes after this is, an, is a function, not a list of numbers. And I'm going to purposely not use that dot just to show you what happens. So it'll work. And then I'm going to type in F Z E R O F zero. And now I can use my function. And it needs a starting point. Many numerical routines need some initial guess from the user. And since we don't, we're, we're going to pretend we don't really know what this looks like. I'm just going to type in zero. It has to have an initial guess. It doesn't have to be a good one. And there it is. Now you'll notice how many decimal points are on this. This is more than you'd normally see. That's because a little while ago when I was playing around, I typed in a command that looked like this, format long. What format does is it, it defines what numbers are going to look like in the command window. To reset it, I'm just going to type in format. That takes it back to the default. And when I execute F0 again, See, I get my four decimal places that I'm used to. Now, the format command is flexible. You can define as many decimal points as you want. You can go to scientific notation, whatever you like. I like to keep it in the default because most of the time, four decimal places is enough. Since I have that there, let's go back and look. 1.2360679. Let's, let's zoom in like we did before and see how close we're going to get with this straight line that's between those points. Okay, I'm just going to keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling here. Okay, I got one, two, three, five, 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 pretty much. Well, that's not the same as this. It's awfully dang close, but it's not the same. And the reason it's not the same is that in between those two points is a straight line. It's not a curve. That When we're, we're connecting the dots with those straight lines, we're essentially making up data. There's nothing actually there. We don't have any information there. We're just putting that, uh, connecting the dots with a straight line to make it easy to look at. So you can see I've got one root over here using F0. I've got the minus 1.2361 which is right there. How do I find the other root? Well, give it a different starting point. We know it's between 3 and 4. Let's just give it 3 and see what happens. There's the other one. I'm going to go ahead and clear the command window here. There's another function called fsolve that works the same way for in uh, single functions like this. There it is. Now it's a lot chattier. It tells you a lot more about what's going on. And again, I can give it, let's give it five. There's, there's the other root. The nice thing about fsolve is you can give it systems of equations. There's a little bit of syntax involved, and we'll learn about that a little later. So there you have it. Here's how to plot the routine, or plot the function. We can zoom in and get a pretty good approximation of what the roots are. And over here, we've used numerical algorithms, f0 and fsolve, to find the roots as exactly as we want to.